Okay, so what I've got here is the uh, LT77 and the R380 gearbox. Um, quick rundown of what the components are. Welcome again to the Trailer Fitters Toolbox. The simplest way to actually tell the difference between the LT77 and the R380 is to look at the top of the gear stick and uh, you'll see this. This is your gear selection. LT77 is this. The vital point here is to pay attention to the position of the reverse and with our R380 gearbox you'll have a gear selection like this. So for those of you who um, want to know a little bit more about the gearbox and uh, haven't actually crawled underneath or changed it all go and have a look on our channel scroll all the way down till you get to the bottom of the playlist you then get a click on the view all and uh, this will bring you up to the LT77 R380 gearbox um, playlist and you can start from there if you like Serial numbers on these gearboxes will actually identify what type of gearbox it is and there are so many varying types it's vital that you know this. This one being from a Land Rover Discovery and this one here is from an LDV200 van. This is different, this is 30AD, this will be an LT77 and if you remember on our buyer's guide we had a gearbox which had the D suffix however the, it's a 50A and the internals are completely different. If you found this sort of thing on your Land Rover you'd have a bit of a shock. There's no fill plug on this side as this is an LT77 two-wheel drive gearbox which came out of a taxi. If you take a look at Ashcroft Transmissions website and you go to manual gearboxes on the home page R380 and we'll scroll down the page you can also see a video of uh, gearbox being built. What you'll see here is the uh, information that you need to know to find out what gearbox you got and this is fairly vital um, when ordering a gearbox. Same applies to the LT77 click on here and this will take you through to the page and what you're looking at here is the description reference to what you'll actually have in your vehicle. Dropping onto the paddock website where you can uh, buy these uh, reconditioned units you get a fair amount of information on the web page Paddock themselves sell reconditioned gearboxes from Ashcroft's Transmissions. Uh, clicking on the link you'll see here the products they do have uh, includes transfer boxes and uh, LSDs and strength and half shafts so check them out. So whether you're purchasing parts for reconditioning your gearbox or actually buying a reconditioned unit to uh, replace the one that you've got you're going to need your serial number for the first point of reference before we get started I'll just mention that I'm going to remove the uh, casing from the gearbox. We're looking at main casing or the gear casing here and on the rear end you'll have the fifth gear and uh, reverse casing. And what we're left with is the internals with the uh, centre support plate here. Okay so what I've got here is the uh, LT77 and the R380 gearbox. Um, quick rundown of what the components are. First of all we have the input shaft, constant pinion which runs onto the lay shaft, all right? lay shaft at the bottom here. This is the main shaft and this is the output to your transfer box, same as any other. This part here is the single rod selector shaft and you have your selector yokes along here and we're running from gears one, first gear, second gear. Between those two is a synchro mesh. Third and fourth also have a synchro mesh. Now, it's the same on this gearbox down here. First, second, third and fourth. Synchro mesh in here. And the synchro mesh between these two, you have your lay shaft. Right. Now, the difference between the two gearboxes R380, you have your fifth gear on the rear, like you do the LT77. However, you have your reverse gear with your idler here. Um, 
have a synchro mesh in between the two, so the reverse is on synchro mesh. Whereas the LT77 down here doesn't have that, it has a, uh, an idler which you have to select and push into place here, and it's not on a synchro mesh, it's a straight cut gears. With your vehicle idling, we have power that comes in to the constant pinion and what happens when you have your foot depressed when the vehicle is stationary there is no movement to the gearbox whatsoever. With the engine running uh, foot off the clutch and no gear selected you'll have rotation down your uh, constant pinion it rotates the lay shaft and the rotation that's all it is the power as it were just turns and operates the lay shaft the gears, however, will be rotating with the lay shaft, but not turning the main shaft. When we select the gear, and we're going to do third gear in this selection, see that locked into place. What that does is lock a gear to the main shaft, and we see the power transfer down the constant pinion onto the lay shaft gear. This is always running. It goes across and then up to the locked gear and the main shaft then starts turning and puts power to the output. So in a nutshell it's when you select the gear you lock it to the main shaft. So if we're looking at a stripped main shaft, this is an LT77 main shaft, you can see where the uh, components would be. Along with your synchro mesh, on, uh, between the constant pinion and the main shaft you have a pilot bearing. The only gear that doesn't utilize the lay shaft for um, turning is the fourth, which is constant pinion. Once that's locked, that just locks to the main shaft. The fourth gear, constant pinion, is generally the one-to-one -one ratio in the gearbox. And on this particular bearing, the uh, is knackered. You can see that it's in not very good condition at all. The uh, bearings are chipped. And looking at the race as well, you can see here the damage so this would actually be a noisy bearing not that you'd possibly notice in a Land Rover okay so hang on before you think the, the bearing might be uh, noisy when you have uh, the vehicle idling check out this video which will be in the playlist too and it'll explain about the clutch plate rattle the Land Rover gearboxes, the LT380 uh, they are oil fed and the oil pump is in the back in this casing now these are um, powered by the lay shaft. This is the R380 and it's an all steel um, geared oil pump which doesn't wear as much. This fits in the back of the casing here. R380 has an oil filter on the oil pickup pipe and on the LT77 on the housing here the filter is actually in here so you can access it. When the oil is pumping, it's pumped up through this here in the casing to the main shaft and these are the oil filled holes for the main shaft. Looking at the main shaft itself, you can see the oil feed holes which feed the gears which rotate on the main shaft. And looking at the gears themselves, you can see that you have bushes and needle roller bearings. Okay, so that's the rotating part. The rest of the components in the gearbox are splash fed, which means the lay shaft which is running in the oil will throw the oil up into the gears and the rest of the bearings. Okay, so you know that the Synchro Hub locks the gear into place. Uh, what we need to do is explore exactly how it does this. With the gearbox in neutral, you can move the gear stick from side to side and you feel resistance on the selector housing springs. Pushing it forwards or backwards, you're going to engage the synchro hubs like this or like this. The gears should be sitting straight when this is in the gearbox because it's sitting on the axle stands, it won't be straight on the custom pin as you can see here. Going back to our stripped main shaft, LT77 out of a discovery, you'll see that they have splines which retain the synchro hubs on the main shaft they're fixed. Okay, Synchro Hub itself 
there's <laughs> quite a few bits to these. You can see the splines on this one here, okay, corresponding to the main shaft. And within the Synchro Hub, we have a bulk ring. Well, in this case, there's only one, and uh, that fits in this way. This is what helps synchronize the gears so the uh, Synchro Hub can lock into it. If we look, we can see them in here. Okay, and I'll explain how these work. To actually select a gear when you're running at road speed, you need to be able to synchronize the, uh, the hub with the gear itself. Okay, and now what you see here are the uh, dog teeth. When they come into line, it will lock into place. So it's the bulk ring that will slow them and synchronize the gear to the synchro hub. So basically what you're doing when you uh, put your foot on the clutch, you're disengaging the constant pinion. And as you push the gear lever, it synchronizes and locks the hub to the dog teeth. So if you look here, you can see the um, sintered bronze and the face of the gear. And as they come together, the friction, it pulls it so it synchronizes, slows it down if you like. You uh, then have your synchro hub, the dog teeth are all lined up and you can lock it into place. You know if the bulk rings are worn and they won't work because you'll be able to hear when you're trying to select gear that you're catching the dog teeth on the gear. Okay, well I've shown you one type of um, gear and uh, there are other types as well. This is uh, a later design from uh, an LT77. This is first second on an LT77 which had been a 200 TDI um, discovery and uh, you can see here this is actually more complex. It does the same job basically, you're lining up your dog teeth and once your uh, bog rings have slowed it down it will lock into place and on older gearboxes they would have been all the same whereas nowadays if you can see that they uh, come in varying shapes and sizes. On the basic synchro hub you have your body obviously and you have your slider and you also have slipper plates you can see them here with there's a slipper plates with springs put together they look something like this as I already explained when the engines running and you're stationary you can uh, push your foot on the clutch and disengage nothing else is rotating in the gearbox when you're driving however and you push your foot on the clutch you disengage the engine from the gearbox but the main shaft is still turning if you uh, understand anything about clutchless driving you'll realize that you have to match your engine speed to your main shaft speed this way you don't need to disengage the gearbox from the engine if you're no good at this technique however it is wise to use your clutch this will give the uh, gear chance to synchronize and lock in without damaging any dog teeth.